A prejudice is a judgment made before you have objectively evaluated whatever it is. Do not accuse me of prejudice, because that is not what I have done. Recognizing irreconcilable inconsistencies is not prejudice. You said in your earlier letter that you did not read the Quran and you will not read. In this letter of yours, now you are saying that you have read some of Quran and you found it unacceptable, without giving reference to any verse or chapter. Seems you are visiting anti-Islamic websites that pick out verses to be misquoted. As any book can be mispresented if some of its sentences are misquoted Quran cannot be an exception in this aspect. Watch this video to understand what I am trying to convince you. Banned from YouTube. Reply to Islamic teachings found in the Quran. And, th and there is no irreconcilable inconsistency in the Quran. The Quran was revealed in certain circumstances during 23 years of prophethood of Prophet Muhammad. So what were the circumstances of revelation of a particular verse? need to be kept in mind, before we interpret that verse. The Prophet peace be upon him, passed through different circumstances along with his companions, for these 23 years. The revelations were the source of timely guidance for those people, under those circumstances. But they were to be followed by nations to come after them, with correct understanding. If they were attacked, they were instructed to fight, and the proper way of fight of a God-conscious person is described. There is no ethnic cleansing in Islam, but we need to fight at times, to survive and to dominate over the whole situation, to bring about peace and justice. Watch the video. Justice and Fight in Islam When two groups fight, some are the perpetrator of injustice, others get involved circumstantially, and yet other become misguided into fighting, and the dealing with all these types of people need to differ when time to prescribe justice comes. But anti-Islamists chose the harshest part of the justice given in the Quran, to misguide people against it. That's why I gave you the link of the website which explains about Quran in detail, the circumstances of revelation of a verse, the explanation and its implementation in practical life. Obviously if God really existed, and anyone's description of him were correct, meaning that he was just, loving, and just, then he absolutely would not condone misogyny, slavery, murder, racism, sexism, and all the other horrible things you God promotes. You are very right about your concept of God. But you cannot understand the worldly circumstances and their correlation with scriptural directives until you accept and hypothesize that this world is a place of short trial for us, and the final abode will be attained according to our works in this world. Because God has made this world for trial, He has placed people in different gradations. Some are higher in strength, intellect, positions and other worldly gifts health, beauty etc. while others are lower. In the very similar way the hereafter will also differ in its gradations for different people. We stand on number line in this world. Some are very very positive and some are very very negatives while others are in between. We all cannot be equal in every aspect of life. But we need to remember that these gradations are not permanent. Some gradations can be changed with our own efforts while others can't. We need to keep ourselves satisfied that some circumstances cannot be changed and so we ascribe them as wish of God. This is another aspect of our trial. To accept the role God has assigned us. This is better for society if we accept our role in it. But there are people who misunderstand this assignment. We all cannot become king slash ruler of our country. Only one will be assigned this role. So if a ruler is decided by consensus, one should prepare himself to obey his command, unless he commands injustice. So it is a I hope you do agree. So God does not condone slavery, that's why Quran instructs Muslims to treat them kindly, and to release the captives, while humans like to subjugate humans in the following way. Visit the link slavery in 2011, vulnerable men snatched off Britain's streets by travelers, 
kept in squalor, their benefits seized, and forced into hard labor. The same is true for misogyny. Women are more competent to do household jobs, and taking care of the children, and are supposed to be respected for the role they play in the society. Most women love to take responsibility of their children, but they should get financial support with justice, to do this job correctly, and with their full involvement, without botheration about outside work, which is supposed to be done by men who are more capable physically to do that job. There is no harm in separate work assignment for genders. The justice demands it. But if the woman is demeaned for her assigned role, she will try to show her competence in the work outside, and once the woman decides to stay outside, the whole society suffers, including herself, family and children. That women are being employed, as they no more produce many children, so their inside home role has become limited with baby care centers, nursery and schools, but women had the role of educating child in every aspect in the past. That's why religious scriptures have assigned them household role, and it is no misogyny, but instead, accommodating to their body structure and physical and mental need. Nothing can be explained by your assumption that such a being exists. Not the completely inconsistent descriptions from Hindus, Sikhs, Jews, Zoroastrians, and so on, and none of the many arguments I have, which I have already posted to you and which you have summarily ignored due to your own prejudice I might add. Quran says that God sent guidance to all humanity, and the previous scriptures also conform to this statement of the Quran. As I wrote earlier, the original Hindu scriptures describe and its preservers upper Hindu caste people know it well that God is one. But what they worship are some saints or gurus, witchcraft women Durga, Kali etc., prophets such as Shiva, Rama, Krishna etc., angels such as Varun Devta, Agni Devna etc., the things have become messed up so much, that it becomes difficult for common people, to understand basics of religion from those scriptures. Sikhs and Zoroastrianism are pure monotheism. Jews are called people of the book in the Quran for possessing earlier revelation, they are purely monotheistic too. They differ in their concept of being chosen people of God. Quran chapter 2 verses 40 onwards describe about Jews. God chooses a people whom he gives scriptures, and assigns them job of taking care of other mankind and conveying the message. If those people fail in this job, he brings another group of people to do this job. It is the same like a teacher chooses a class monitor and can change him, if the job is not done correctly. So the one who becomes class monitor is privileged but a similar responsibility too. All yours or anyone else's religious claims amount to is making up things you would rather believe and then pretending that they're true. This is dishonest. I am not making up things. It is in this way that truth exists. You have met Hamza who accepted Islam, there are many who have done it knowing that it is the truth. And I am not forced by anyone to accept or obey Islam. It is because of my getting convinced it to be the truth. In the scriptures that I am familiar with, the worst thing Satan ever did was to try to reason with people, trying to reason them out of the silly assertions of faith. So it is no surprise that you call me Satan. Satan rejected superstition. Superstition begat your God, and the God in your fables endorses superstition where Satan does not. Neither character actually exists. Both are adaptations of the earlier deities from the Avestas of Zarathustra. But you'll never accept or explore that, because it is more important to you that you believe in your religion, than whether your beliefs are really true. I did not call you Satan. And you really have no knowledge about Satan. Superstitions are not from God. God ascribes clear reasoning. And as I told you that earlier scriptures were revelations from God, which still have monotheistic concepts. While its followers have forgotten true concept of the life hereafter. Islam was the original religion revealed to all prophets and Zoroaster was himself a prophet who taught monotheism. 
Quran did not copy anything from Avestas nor from Zoroastrians, but Quran has to contain the same truth, due to common origin, and Quran explains the existence of previous scriptures. Read Quran chapter 4 verses 163 to 165. Lo, we inspire thee as we inspired Noah and the prophets after him, as we inspired Abraham and Ishmael and Isaac and Jacob and the tribes, and Jesus and Job and Jonah and Aaron and Solomon, and as we imparted unto David the Psalms. And messengers we have mentioned unto thee before, and messengers we have not mentioned unto thee. And Allah spake directly unto Moses, messengers of good cheer and of warning, in order that mankind might have no argument against Allah after the messengers. Allah was ever mighty, wise. Visit this website which is a research showing that every nation was sent a messenger.